Clarinet harmonics. It's important. My profile link will bring you to the link tree. Go to YouTube and you will find the expose on this in detail. How to do it, why it's important. Harmonics. That's an open G. harmonics on the clarinet and that teaches our embouchure something that's very important. From open G, the way I'm getting that, the lower notes in the clarinet have slower vibration, the higher notes have faster vibration. If I just take a little, little more read, it's more free to vibrate and it can vibrate faster. It can favor the upper harmonics. I'm not really moving my jaw. What I'm doing is taking my embouchure and reaching to the heart of the reed a little bit, very little. This is step, this whole nugget assumes you have a developed embouchure, it's firm, it's correct, you understand voicing. We'll do, I'm going to do separate nuggets on that stuff. But just this alone is an important idea. We can play and favor by finding the center place for the various harmonics on the clarinet. That's a high D. That is the correct place to actually play the high D. If I have too little read and, you know, the student is learning to play higher and higher notes and find it's harder and harder and harder and is tighter and tighter and tighter and you've all, if you teach clarinet, experience this. It's like, oh, that's hard, right? And, and, and then the student can't go above an E or an F or a G because it's, it feels like you know, have to use more tension up there. When actually, you need to, having a good embouchure, you need to get out of the way and let the reed vibrate. Just take a little more to favor the upper harmonic. So if I'm tight, I can have too little and compensate in other ways. But here's the exercise. G, harmonic G, then harmonic D, and then the D. All right? speaks, it resonates, it's got lots of harmonic content. The actual place where we find the harmonic for the high D is the position that's the center place for the high D, where we don't need to do gymnastics with the chops to compensate for it in other ways, and it'll speak. It's where the harmonic wants to speak, it's where the note wants to speak, it's the right place for that D. And we can use the same technique to expand the range of the clarinet into the super altismo this way. Here's a super A, E, then the A. You notice it has, the E and the A have the same fingering. Although maybe I might change the balance key to favor it. But that's just because I'm voicing for a different harmonic. I can voice for yet another harmonic above the A and I'll get the D above super C. That's a D. I'll go B flat, then E flat above super C. That was a C and an F, just by favoring the harmonic. Now, if anyone writes up there, it's their own fault. Now, when I go and start playing the bottom range of the instrument again, everything speaks, and I've got lots of harmonic content and lots of color because all those unknowable things inside the mouth, this where the soft palate is, the voicing of the tongue. We're going to talk about voicing in the next segment I'm going to do next week. Voicing sounds like an abstract thing, but everyone voices. Um, that's why people from Manchester sound different than someone from Texas, because of the way they voice. Or someone from Britain's, you know, speaks in the front of the mouth, where if someone from Texas, it's more down there. It's that's voicing. It's the shape inside the mouth where we place the resonance, the shape of the tongue, the shape of the soft palate, the position of the mouth affects tone, affects airflow, affects shape, and it affects the sound of the clarinet too. So today was about position, embouchure position, 